They are uh, so appreciative of the moment. They don't take any of what's happening to them for granted. They are the same guys now as they were when I first met them. Hey, Liam McEwen is a 24-year-old celebrity interviewer, originally from New Zealand, but currently living in Los Angeles, California. He's a regular on the red carpet, where he's known for his intelligent yet playful interview style that entertains both his guests and the fans watching from home. So how many times have you met BTS at this point? At this point, it's gotta be like six or seven. The first time was at the Billboard Music Awards in 2017 when they first came over for their first Billboard appearance. Who would have known? Who would have thought that this would have happened? It's one of those things, and I know it's people say it all the time, but it's so true that once you're once you're in the army world, once you do that deep dive, there is no coming out. And had you been a fan of BTS before that first interview? I'd known of their work and I'd respected their stuff. The first uh, single that I got into at the time was Not Today. I think that might, might have been even their latest single when I did my first interview with them. And I remember watching that and just being so incredibly impressed. <laughs> and then obviously doing a, a deeper dive into other stuff. So I saw like uh, Blood, Sweat and Tears and then I'd gone back to Fire. And I was just like, wow, this, this is insane. This is so commendable. So then I'd done my first interview at the Billboard Awards and then two weeks later we had another interview planned uh, which we did at the house that they were staying at here in Hollywood. So by that time I was like, oh, I'm, I'm intrigued. You know what I mean? I, I genuinely want to know more about this band. Um, so as you do, anyone who does somewhat of a good interview knows, do your research because it's the least you can do. They're giving you the time of day and um, you want to look good, don't you? You want to you want to know your stuff. I've been lucky enough since to, you know, as I say, it's been six, seven interviews at this point. The, the last few, I've, I've I've been a big army, so I've definitely been able to sit there and appreciate the moment as 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 I do it, and just not take it for granted. So, having met the guys so many times at this point, um, how would you describe them as people? <laughs> Honestly, what you imagine them to be like, they are genuinely just the coolest dudes. What you see on camera is them, there's no facade. They are uh, so appreciative of the moment. They don't take any of what's happening to them for granted. They are the same guys now as they were when I first met them. Um, and a lot's happened for them since <laughs> the Billboard Awards in 2017. If anything, they have actually learned how to use their fame for good which is, is, is something that I think they will keep doing. Are there any uh, memorable moments you've had with the boys off camera? Yeah, there's been a few fun ones, like uh, the Love Yourself Tear interview. I gave them donuts um, at the end of the interview. Um, there's a, a, a really cool donut store um, here in Koreatown called Fantastic Donuts, and they got in touch with me and said, hey, we'd like to give donuts for you to give to the guys. And I said, this is such a good idea, feed the boys. And it got cut out of the final cut, but at the end, they're just sitting there, just eating these donuts. And the donuts had their BT21 characters, so Mung and Tata, and they all looked through the box to try to find their character, and they were all eating them, and they were just making commentary about how much they were enjoying these donuts. And it was just such a nice, pure moment at the end of an interview to, to, to finish off the vibe. Another one as well that um, I like to think back to, it was at the house that they were staying in in Hollywood here. Nam June and I just talking about New Zealand. That's that's special for me because um, obviously New Zealand's my home. I'm very proud of my country. It was just cool to be able to have that conversation with him um, because he studied there and he stayed in the most obscure places in New Zealand as well. So he wasn't just staying in the big cities. So that was cool. That was that was cool to be able to have a, have a conversation about something that I had no idea that I would be able to have a com conversation with, with him about. I do see the uh, Love Yourself hoodie behind you. You see yeah. right, I believe? Yeah, so you keep, I understand that you keep like some of the things that you've had during these interviews. I like to keep some of the stuff. I was in New Zealand three or so days before the Love Yourself Tear interview happened. And I was thinking, what can I do? Like what, like every time I see them, I like to do something a little bit quirky or a little bit fun or something that will get a, a reaction out of them because obviously there there is a language barrier. So the Love Yourself hoodie was one of those things. I just wanted to, you know, show my true army. Um, and it's actually a piece of unofficial merchandise that I got on eBay. So on hindsight, it's like, why did I wear that? But it's iconic and it's great. And I remember at the end of the interview, Namjoon was like, where did you get the hoodie? And I was like, Ubo. 
<laughs> this, which was the book that I came in with my interview questions, which are in here somewhere. Yeah. Um, which is cool. This was another thing where I was just like, I just want to go in and, 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 and be an army. This, which in my American Music Awards interview um, in 2017, Jimin high fived and confetti came flying out of it. That was just another one of those things where I was like, this is a fun little gag. A sparkly bow tie, which I wore on my first interview with BTS. For some reason, this bow tie um, stuck with them. And every time I've seen them since, they've asked where it was. <laughs> Jungkook in particular, I remember quite liking this. I, I, I guess this was the start of, of me wearing things that they would then kind of affiliate with me as time went on. I think those things were things like this and my hair. So let's go back a bit. Um, how did you get started in the entertainment industry? I started when I was 13 um, at a small little teeny tiny little community radio station in New Zealand. You're listening to The Flea. It's currently 29 minutes past nine. New Zealand's a very small country. So imagine a community radio station in a small country. That's as small as you can possibly get. But anyway, it was, it was so helpful in terms of teaching me the ropes and teaching me the, the, the ins and outs of how to use my voice, how to interact with people, how to uh, convey a story using just my voice. And then people started tuning in, people started interacting, and I was like, okay, I think this is where I'm going to be for the rest of my life. I love talking, is what I'm trying to get to here. Anyway, so then after that, um, I got scouted by iHeartRadio in New Zealand. Um, and I was like, okay, this is great. This is a good step up from a small community radio station. About two and a half years after working at iHeart, I was like, I want to do international stuff. Um, and that's how I found myself over here doing the craziest things. I moved over here in 2017, so I was 21 um, when I came over here. And I've just had so much fun. How, how can you not? I'm in Hollywood. I know that you're like a big, big Michael Jackson fan. Is that where your love of music started? Yes, I would, I would say my, my passion for music came from um, standing Michael Jackson. Ever since I remember, ever since my parents remember, my first word apparently was light. Um, and they knew from that moment that I would always be on stage or I would always be in front of the spotlight or something like that. That's what they always say anyway. But you know, when I was younger, I used to dance to the Wiggles, I used to dance to all that stuff. So performing and just being here I am has always been a big, I guess, part of, of me. But in terms of actually being passionate about the music and learning more about the music and doing deep dives into who an artist is, being a fan of Michael Jackson has absolutely done that for me. I did see a video of you that you shared of you dancing like Michael Jackson as a teenager. Damn, you did do a deep dive. <laughs> Could you tell me about that part of your, your career, your life? It was kind of like, I just loved Michael so much that I wouldn't necessarily say it was dancing that I was passionate about. It was the fact that I could go out there and put on this performance that was in tribute to Michael. Do you know what I mean? Or, if, or I could put on the stage performance that was replicated as closely as possible to Michael as I could. And I just found that so exhilarating and just so much fun to be able to do. So I spent so much time just watching his music videos or watching his dance performances in slow motion and in all the different ways you possibly could and just tried to perfect every single detail of, of, of the movements. And then I got found by Auckland Dance Company, which is a dance company back in New Zealand, and they wanted me to teach a Michael Jackson dance class. And how could I say no to that? Um, so that was kind of like my one of my first little side gigs. Speaking of dancing, I know that you have danced with uh, Tomorrow Bite Together. Very well, by the way. I was really taken aback with uh, how great that was. That definitely uh, was not as flawless as it looked on the camera, and I will tell you why. What people didn't see is that the boys were teaching me that choreography for, I want to say, about 20 minutes. In the video, it was compressed down to like five, but I, it, I definitely took my time trying to get those steps. And I, Everyone was there and their team was like, okay, cool, did you get the shot? And so it was like, no, I'd like to do it again, please. No, no, I'd like to do it again, please. Just until I got to a point where I was like, you know what, this looks somewhat good. Because I'm dancing next to one of the, some of the best dancers in the world. Looking good next to them is not an easy task, so I appreciate that. So do you think little Liam back in New Zealand would believe that you uh, got this far? Yes and no. Yes, because why wouldn't I have 
been able to make this happen because I, I, I don't believe, I believe that literally anything is possible. I, I'm, I'm a big believer in just like, if you, if you want to do something, you're going to do it. The only thing that's stopping you is literally doubt. I just thought that this was something that I wanted to do and I put my, my everything into getting here. There have been so many full circle moments that I would never have believed. Like I never would have believed that I would have got to interview Michael Jackson's dad. The voice of Bart Simpson, I, when I was growing up, The Simpsons was one of my favorite shows. If I had known that I would have been able to do an interview with the SpongeBob cast, oh my gosh, never would have believed it. But now it, 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 those are the things that I like look back at and think this is why I moved here. These are the moments that I will always, will always remember. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Yeah, I want to share my gratitude to the army. I'm just so grateful that my work has been able to uh, to positively impact uh, what seems like an entire fan base. You know that that means so much, and that's all I can really ask for as an interviewer. That's literally <laughs> my goal as an interviewer for the fans of the people that I'm interviewing to enjoy the content. That's 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 the goal for me to literally now have so many doors open up for me in the K-pop world. You know forever grateful. I love talking to ARMY and I love, because I'm one myself, you know, I go to the BTS concert wearing the t-shirt, I go wearing my BT21 headband, like I'm, I'm one of them. So come up and, and talk to me, we're all in this together, you know? <laughs>